Welcome back to the channel. It's a perfect day today to not mow my lawn. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm not going to mow my lawn. In fact, you're probably going to see me grilling. You might even see me out by the pool. I'm going to be playing with the kids. I'm going to do things I want to do on a beautiful day like this. In the meantime, my Orion X7 by Sunseeker is going to do all the work. This is a robotic lawnmower in today's video. I'm just quickly going to show you what comes in the box, show you how it's set, it's set up. It's a really easy setup. In fact, it's probably the easiest setup I've ever done. Um, it was actually kind of fun to set up. Uh, and then we're going to let it go. We're going to let it mow the lawn for us while we enjoy our day with the family. So let's get right into it. Let's go. All right, so I'm gonna quickly show you what comes in the box and talk a little bit about the kind of setup that I'm gonna be doing, and then I'm gonna go ahead and set it up, and then we're gonna let it go. So this is the base right here. So this is what this docks into to charge, and you've got your charging units right here. In fact, you have a charger and a power supply right here. And then in here, you're going to have all the accessories you need. You've got your manuals, You've got your spikes. Now the spikes are great because you're going to be able to spike this down and I'll show you that in a little bit. And then you've got some extra spikes and you also have some extra blades, which is nice that they include that. Um, and again, these are just chargers right here. And then let me talk quickly about this base here. So the base is com comprised of two different parts. So you have the main base part right here and then you have this little guy right here that kind of pops on the top and this guides this into the docking station so it's super super important then you have the main unit here the main unit's pretty unique so it has these eyes right here these are obstacle avoidance eyes I actually really like that because i've got a lot of obstacles in my yard um, as you can see right behind me i've got these two trees right here i have a zero turn about five acres worth to mow so as you can imagine getting around these little trees with the stones all around and then around my patio i've got another patio over here i've got a garden back there i've got wells i've got a lot of things that are avoidances and if you have one of those big zero turns like i have it's really difficult to maneuver so i end up having like one of those push reel mowers to get around there or weed whacking it's a lot of work hopefully this eliminates some of that work for me because i can just let it go now this is the x7 by orion this particular one is, is rated at 0.75 acres. So 0.75 acres for me would be this entire area all the way to my pool. So it's gonna get all around the patio, it's gonna get all around the patio, this side, around these trees, all that. The parts that are the hardest for me when I'm on my zero turn, in fact, I spend more time just in this area than I do the rest of the four acres I've got behind me. Um, so again, let me just show you really quick. It's got the eyes, it's got the two legs here, it's got something unique, which I like about this, is underneath here, I don't know if you've seen a lot of robotic lawnmowers, if you've used any, uh, but you will notice that there's the two blades, not just one. So there's two of these. So you actually have a 14 inch cut uh, width, which is great. And it also has, this is what's unique, a powered swivel wheel. So it's almost like a zero turn on a robotic lawnmower. So it just pivots on itself. So it won't tear up your grass as much as it would for some of the other robotic lawnmowers that I have used. Um, so, and they're really heavy duty tires. Um, so you can get a pretty good grade. I don't know the exact grade, but I'll, I'll, uh, I'll look that up and I'll mention it while it is going. I have a pretty flat lawn, lawn here, so I don't really pay attention to that. Uh, it's old farmland, so uh, let's put this down. All right, it's actually not that heavy. I lifted it up pretty good. Uh, I just worry because it is plastic. I don't want it to break when I kind of lift it. So make sure you grab it by handles. There's these little handles here. So that's super important when you're lifting it uh, because if you grab it like I kind of did here, if I would have lifted it, I wouldn't have done it. These are plastic right here. So it's a plastic frame, so it's pretty light. I do like that it's light, um, but it has a decent amount of weight so that it can push that grass down. Uh, as far as cutting levels, I think you can go from anywhere from about 0.6 inches, I believe, um, up to about four inches. So I can make this like a little golf course. This is where all the kids play. So I like it to have, be a little bit shorter. So I'm gonna be able to do that in the app with this. So it's not a manual way to do it. You do it in the app. So there's an app for this uh, where you just scan it with your phone on your camera and then you can get right into the app. Uh, and then in addition to that, you've got this right here. Now, this is super important, guys. This is what makes it really wireless. So this is a satellite uh, antenna. So this is what your, is, communicates with this to let you know the boundary. And you actually set a boundary in your app. You drive it around the 
perimeter of your property or the area that you want to mow. Um, and then it communicates with this, goes back to this. Pretty cool little setup. So this needs to have direct access to the sky. So I wouldn't want to put it under these trees. So I'm going to put this out by the pool. And so that way it has, there's no trees around. It goes directly up. Now, if you're in a real forested area, you may need to mount this up on your roof, something like that. So keep that in mind. Uh, but this is your antenna. I've never seen this. Usually you do boundary wires. If you've seen some of my other videos, you've got these boundary wires that you have to put all around the area and it could be 180 meters or more all around your area and you have to stake them in every one to one and a half meters to be able to set that boundary so it knows where to go so it doesn't just take off on you this doesn't use boundary wires this uses the app and then the app you set it up you literally walk behind it through the entire boundary process and then anything within that boundary like these trees it recognizes because of the eyes it stops it goes around it Pretty smart little system here. So that's what comes in the box. I just wanted to do a quick overview of that. Let's go ahead and set it up. Let's get it out there and take a look. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set up the antenna. So that's always the first to do. Uh, so I'm gonna put it out here by the pool um, and I'm actually going to put the base for the mower next to it. Now, you don't, again, you don't have to do that. That's just what I'm gonna do because you don't really want the charging base to be on your grass because with the heat, electrical current, and just sitting there without sun, for long periods of time is going to kill that part of your grass. So I always suggest putting it either um, on some rocks or some mulch, something like that. If you have like a bark or whatever you have at your house, I would definitely do that. Don't put it on your grass. So I'm gonna set the antenna here. It's got a very open area by the pool. There's no trees around anything like that. So it'll definitely get a good uh, angle there. And you can angle this how you want to as well. There's an adjustment if you need to angle it out. Um, and then I'm gonna put the base right here for the mower to dock. So it will go out, it's gonna go around the pool, go through all this area. So I'm gonna set the perimeter now. So we're gonna spike this down. It comes with the supplied spikes and then I've got spikes for the base as well. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, I think this is gonna be the exact, absolutely perfect space for the base here. Um, and again, they give you the spikes to spike this in. So I'm gonna spike this in. I wanna charge up the mower a little bit and then we'll take it on the first ride and I'll show you how to set it up within the app. It's really easy. Again, there's those QR codes on the back of it. Use your phone, set it up, click on set up boundary. So we're gonna do that in just a few moments. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put it on the docking station to charge it up. I want 100% charge because I wanna see how long it will go. Um, I have about maybe a half acre area and this is rated at 0.75 acres and it's very flat land. So I wanna see if on a single charge, I can get this done. I do know from reading the manual that if it doesn't finish, it will go back to the charging dock and then it will continue where it left off. It actually maps it out and I'll show you that on the map on the app, which is really cool. Speaking of that, I, while I charge this, I'm gonna go ahead and download the QR uh, I'm gonna, the app, I'm gonna, so I'm gonna go ahead and scan the QR code right back here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it right in the docking station. Let me scan this really quick so I have easy access to it. Uh, just open up the camera on your phone and hold it right here based on the type of device you have. If you have an Apple, Google Play, if you wanna see the manual, all that. So I'm going to go ahead and do the App Store. And it just says robotic mower on the app. So I'll just take a screenshot of that and show that to you and we'll go ahead and get it. So I am getting the app right now. Let's go ahead and put it on the charger, and charge it up. So what I'm doing right now is I am just setting up the boundary on this. There's a little set setting within the app, which I have a screenshot of you that I will show you on the screen. I just rotating it around, really easy to manage. And then I'm gonna go ahead and continue on my path for my entire area that I want to do. So this is just creating the boundary i'm not mowing or anything right now just literally creating the boundary and then once i set it to go and go ahead and mow it's going to do it all for me within that boundary line so it's nice and it has the obstacle avoidance with the eyes right on it so uh, it will go around the garden around the trees all that stuff that i struggle with with my zero turn which you can kind of see in the background getting a little off pattern here got to pay attention because i'm controlling the boundary right now i'm not putting wires in or anything I'm just literally creating the boundary.
All right, so we have it all set up, as you can see on the screen here. So this is the area that I'll be mowing. As you can see, it goes around the pool and all of that app is really, really cool to use. So it's out here mowing now. I'm gonna let it go for a little while. We'll talk a little bit about some of the features as it mows. You can kind of take a look at how it does its turns, all of that. I do like the intelligent path planning. So the first time that I set it up, I set it up to automatically decide which way to go and it went vertical. As you can see right now, it is doing a vertical pattern and then the second time I did it, I switched it to horizontal. It's cool that you can do that. You can also set up multi-zones. You have voice controls, all of this built into this thing. So it was a lot of fun to play around with the app. Uh, the first thing I did was, as I'm cutting it here, you can kind of see, I actually cut it a little bit too low. I did it at a uh, too low of a setting. So pick the right cutter height for you and you can go up to four inches so I went ahead and switched it to 2.5 I think 2.5 is good the default was 2.0 and I didn't know that so it cut it a little bit low so I have a little bit of a yellower spot on the grass as it's mowing just in a just in that first few few pass that it went and, and that was my mistake I didn't look at the cutter height so check your cutter height and your cutter rotation speed all that stuff which you can do right there in the app which is really cool um, I don't have a lot of big terrain so I don't have angles massive angles angles or anything like this but it does have all-wheel drive so you can get up those hills at a pretty high grade they say up to a slope of 70 percent um, but here I think the most I have is maybe a 10 percent grade and that's right around where the wells are another thing that's cool is we had some things in in the yard so for example I had my car parked in the yard for a little while there and it actually went around the tires it actually went underneath the car which I thought was pretty interesting. It also went around the trees, it went around the patio really well. It doesn't get super close to the patio wall, which is a good thing because you don't want to scratch the side of your mower. So it kind of recognizes it's right there and it doesn't get too close. So a little weed whacking will be needed to be done um, along the wall. But even if I was on my zero turn, it would be the same situation. But I did my best to create like the perfect pattern as I went around, as you can see here. Um, and I mentioned it a little bit in the beginning. It is a 14 inch wide cut. So it's got dual cutting blades, uh, which I think is nice. Some of the ones I've done in the past had one solid single cutting blades, usually around nine to 11 inches. This is 14 inches, so it's a little bit wider. And you can set this up with Google and all that. So if you wanna say Google mow my lawn, you can do that. I think that's pretty neat that you can do that. The total weight of this unit is about 30 pounds, maybe a little bit more than that. It doesn't feel that heavy to me, but uh, because of the good handle, it's got a really good handle, but it does have Bluetooth, has Wi-Fi and all that, so you can connect to it really easily. And I know I mentioned all of the things that are inside of the box already, so I'm just gonna let this go for a little while, and then we'll take a look at it, and then I'll give you my final thoughts. All right, everybody, it's time for my final thoughts on the Sunseeker Robotic Mower. It has been a savior for time, no question about it. So I'm gonna go over a couple things. It's been about two weeks that I've been using it, so I wanna cover a couple things that I noticed about this thing while I was using it. So first of all, the mowing area is about this wide. So if you've got a huge yard, it might not be the best mower for you. I know there are other robotic mowers. They sell other ones, maybe a little bit wider cut. Uh, but for small areas, this really worked out great. Now I wanted to push the boundaries, so I actually did this entire area here, and then I pushed it even further, and I went to the other side of the yard as well, because I wanted to see if it could do more than 0.75 acres, which is what this is rated for. So I did a full acre and it did it, but it took two days to do the mow. So this area here takes about four hours and two hours of charge. So it goes for a couple hours, goes on the charger for about an hour, and then it continues on its path. And so when I basically doubled its size, it ended up taking two days. And another thing is, even though it has lights here, it did not uh, mow at night. So it does not mow at night. I don't know if there's a setting you can do, you can reach out to the company, but for whatever reason, once it was at night, it would not work. Also, it avoided obstacles really well. I was super impressed with the way that it avoided obstacles, but I parked my vehicle on the grass because I wanted to see if it would avoid it. And it actually mowed underneath the vehicle, but it got stuck um, when it was turning around a tire. So I uh, probably don't want to mow around your vehicles, but I wanted to put it to the test for you guys. So it did actually mow under the car, and it's kind of funny when you look at the map on your phone, it'll actually show the tire circles where it didn't mow. But it did get stuck once um, underneath the vehicle because it's not like a really high vehicle. It was just a little BMW. So it did get stuck going under it. Uh, but overall, I this is a fantastic mower. I mean, it looks cool too. It looks like a little... Uh, 
robot because that's really what it is is a little robot and i've tested quite a few robotic lawn mowers i've got more to come on this channel and so far this is my favorite there's no boundary wires you just drive it yourself and create a boundary you can adjust the boundaries as you want you can create additional boundaries so it's got some really cool features one tip that i do have for you guys something i noticed is is they do a lot of updates so make sure you're up to date on the update. So if you go on vacation for a couple weeks and you come back, you're gonna have, probably have to do an update. That's just my experience. Could be because this is a new model, so they're improving it, improving it, which is good, but it won't work if you don't update it. So I had to do some updates and I was down for a couple days during the testing process. So it took me a little longer than expected to do it, but overall, great build. Um, I would recommend putting your satellite unit that I had out here in the yard on your roof if this is going to be a permanent unit because you want to have a good signal. Once we had a really stormy day, it was very cloudy most of the day and it wouldn't get a signal so it wasn't working. And you probably wouldn't want to you know, mow in the rain anyway, but if it's super cloudy or foggy, it may not work unless you have a clear signal. So big, big open field or maybe on your roof would be a good option with a robotic mower like this one. Again, this is the Sun Seeker. I definitely recommend it. It's affordable. It saves you a lot of time and the grass looks great. I'm super impressed with it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks again, everybody. Bye.